All right. So I figured it'd be good to do a little video on how I do chair confirmations. Um, the big thing we have to keep in mind is that when we draw a wedge, that means up. When we draw a dash, that means down. Remember, dash down. We cannot flip this. That is just how life works. So whenever I am doing a chair confirmation, I label and I start numbering and I go to the top and I rotate clockwise and label to number six. I do this every single time, no matter what problem I have, if I'm ever given a cyclohexane, I always number one through six because I'm anticipating I'm probably going to have to draw a chair confirmation. So when I draw my chair, I label, and I label in the top right, and I want to make that very clear. This is what I call my normal chair, because in my mind, it looks like I'm reading it left to right, right? It's almost like it's swaying and bending left to right. So in my mind, I read this as normal. So this is my normal chair confirmation. If I were to flip this to the opposite, this position looks weird to me. So I call this my weird chair because it looks like I'm reading it right to left. It just looks like a goofy confirmation. I don't know. It just like it sways right to left. Um, it's also harder for me to draw, so I think that's probably why my brain kind of just calls it weird, because it's like you have to go against your hand. Um, and because it's weird, we denote the six in the top corner. And I want to stop and make this extremely blatantly obvious and redundant. I label every cyclohexane one through six, and I start at the tip top, and I just go clockwise one through six. Every single time I draw a cyclohexane, I don't care what problem it is, I always number one through six. And when I draw my normal confirmation, I denote a special place for that one, and it's in the top right most corner. And that's important because every single time I draw a chair, my default chair is normal. I go to normal, and I draw that one in the top right, and I rotate it clockwise. When I'm doing a confirmation, and I draw this weird, goofy cyclohexane confirmation, I immediately switch that top rightmost position to a six, and then I begin my numbering clockwise as well. The reason you do this is because it takes the work out for you. You don't have to think critically about this because by labeling this after labeling this with a six in the top right corner after conforming it, it automatically will set and swap these positions from equatorial to axial. So we'll, we'll walk through this example, but before we start labeling these things as equatorial and axial on our normal chair confirmation, I want to explain how I think about this. There are two different types of junctions at a cyclohexane. There is the position in which your substituents look like this. And remember, this is tetrahedral, right? But at this position, and much like this position or this position where it's pointing up, you see that there are three things pointing down. Three things pointing down. At every one of these junctions, you have one group pointing directly up and then three groups sprawling out towards the bottom. But what we notice is at these other junctions, you have three groups sprawling up and one coming down. And that's different, right? Because at any given point, you can interpret this and be like, okay, I have two going down. That means that I have a third sprawling down. So my tetrahedral shape in this top corner has three sprawling down and one coming directly up. If I go to this two, I see it looks similar to this purple, which is I have three sprawling up and one going straight down. 
And that's important because this flips every time, right? We have three sprawling down and one going directly up. The two has three sprawling up, one going directly down. The three has three sprawling down again and going directly up. And then one going up and then the four has three sprawling up and then one going directly down. That's important because we labeled our wedges and our dashes to denote up and down. So if we're consistent with that, then what we notice is that on one, three are sprawling down and one is going up, but on one on this molecule, three are sprawling up and one is going down. So by default, we have now flipped what is sprawling up and what is going directly down. So it's important to think about all these junction points as like a tetrahedral geometry in which you have three going down or up and then one going directly down or directly up. Um, hopefully that kind of made sense. So I'll just start drawing this. So we have on carbon one, a chlorine going up. When I think about what's going down and what's going up, I see that this one adopts this type of tetrahedral geometry in which three are sprawling down and one is pointing up. I know chlorine is up, so the only position to go up is perfectly vertical, which is axial. When I go to two, I see there's nothing. When I go to three, I see it's pointing up. I also see that three adopts, again, this type of geometry, which is three sprawling down and one going up. And because it's up, the only up position is the directly up axial. When I look at four, I see it's going down. Four looks like this, in which you have three groups sprawling up and one going directly down. Since it's one going directly down, it's going to be axial directly down. But things switch when I go to carbon five, right? Because it's down again. But what I see is that this configuration looks like this. So I have three groups going down and one going directly up, but I know this methyl is going down. So one of these three groups sprawling down has to be my methyl. So I have two sprawling down in this direction. So the next direction, if I wanna mimic this tetrahedral is like that. And I see it's my methyl because on this carbon, it adopts this tetra, um, tetrahedral geometry. And because of that, we have three groups sprawling down from it and one pointing directly up. But because we know our methyl is denoted as down, it has to be one of those three sprawling down. So that is what my cyclohexane looks like. And if we flip over now and do the other chair, the only thing that switches is equatorial and axial. Nothing changes, right? This is still a wedge up and a dash down. The only thing that's different now is we're going from axial to equatorial. So let's take this chlorine. See how it was up and it had this tetrahedral geometry and the only position up was vertically axial. If we look now, our one is in this corner. It's been rotated. We conformed the structure. So now the only thing that's going up is in this type of tetrahedral geometry in which you have one of the sprawling up groups. The axial is now down. And so this chlorine takes on one of the sprawling up positions, which looks like that. It's still up, it's still pointed up. It's just equatorial now because it's adopting the tail end of the tetrahedral. The three, the methyl is still going up, but again, now the methyl is adopting a very similar flipped tetrahedral. And what's going up is one of the three sprawling groups. And because the methyl is up, it has to be one of those sprawling groups. If we think about the OH now, the OH is going down on carbon four and it's flipped as well. The only down positions on this four are sprawling down. The only one up is axial, but it's not up. This methyl is down. So it has to be one of these sprawling tetrahedral tails. And if we now go to the final carbon, um, I think I line something differently. Um, the five is going down. And what we see is it exactly, again, looks like this, in which we have three sprawling up and one going down. And the only position down is axial. So we can see that all of the blue is still going up. All of the red are still going down. 
See, the red are still pointed down, but what was equatorial is now axial down, and what was axial down is now equatorial down. What was axial up in the blues are now equatorial up. But the important thing to recognize is that you need to start shifting your focus to view these more of as tetrahedral geometry and really physically seeing how, like, at this carbon, it's pointing up, and there's three things sprawling down from it, and then the one chlorine coming up. In my mind, it helps make sense that way. Um, the way I draw my chairs is I do a slant, do a small slant on the bottom, and a long slant on the top. And then I know that this has to be parallel, coming off of here in the same distance, and then this has to be parallel and coming off the same distance. So again, I draw my line, I draw a small slant, and I draw a long slant. Then I know that I have to mimic this exact line, parallel, coming from this junction. So I try to mimic it, then I know from this junction I have to mimic this exact line. And if I've done that successfully, this line will default match this line. And you end up with a cyclohexane. And the same thing is if you do the weird conformation, but instead of your bottom line being shorter, top line shorter. And it's hard to get the hang of it, but just knowing that you have to build it slowly and then mimic those parallel lines. That was a terrible one. You'll get the hang of it. <laughs>